Detroit Industrial Vehicles Company. Take the first letters of these four words and you have the name of a manufacturer that made delivery vehicles from 1926 through 1986. Hi, I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and this is Toy Talk. Each week, I release videos on the best die-cast replicas to add to your collection. Subscribe to keep up. Also, if you enjoy the content, please shop my website, farmtoysandmore.com, or sponsor me over on my Patreon page to help keep this channel going. Today, I've got a truck that many of you may have very fond memories of, and really a sweet model. The Divco company manufactured its incredible multi-stop delivery trucks, which were almost exclusively used as home delivery vehicles. <laughs> These vehicles were widely used by the dairy industry for home delivery of dairy products. Helms Bakery delivered bread, cakes, donuts, and a variety of other products to the front door with special built Divco trucks. How did the most used and even sought after delivery truck come into being? Well, there was this young man that went by the name of George Bacon. He was the chief engineer for the Detroit Electric Vehicle Company. George left the company in 1926 over a disagreement with his boss. You see, Bacon wanted to use gasoline engines instead of electric motors to overcome limits on range and performance of electric powered vehicles in cold weather. This was a sound suggestion because gasoline engines were taking hold of the automotive industry. George thought that they would be a better power plant and be more dependable. The electric motor and battery would do in the summer, but in fall and winter, <laughs> battery power would be lower because of the cold. The gasoline motor would not be affected by the cold and would offer unlimited range. With George's ideas being different from his boss, George Bacon left the company and started his own delivery truck company in 1926 and named it the Detroit Industrial Vehicle Company, or DIVCO for short. DIVCO's Model A was first to come out of Bacon's factory. They proved to be practical, but looked like a box. In 1928, a larger, more conventional looking Model G was introduced that evolved into the Model S that was manufactured into the 1930s. Troubled times befell Bacon's company and he sold his company to the Continental Motors Company. Continental was the chief supplier of engines installed in Divco trucks. Divco then became known as Continental Divco. In 1936, Continental Divco spun off Divco to the Twin Coach Company, and Divco became known as Divco Twin. 1937 saw big changes for the model year. The new model featured a welded all-steel van body and a snub-nosed hood. This model was manufactured with almost no changes up to the end of the line in 1986. The delivery driver could either stand or sit while driving, depending on his preference. On early models, the throttle was a rotary knob on the end of the manual transmission shift lever. This setup was eventually replaced with a right foot button as the throttle control. As time progressed, Warner Gear for Divco developed a two pedal control system. The left pedal served as both a clutch and brake. When the driver pushed it halfway down, it disengaged the clutch, allowing the driver to shift the manual transmission. Releasing the pedal would engage it. 
pushing the left pedal all the way down would apply the brakes. I guess once a driver got used to the vehicle, it was easy to drive. Until Frederick McKinley Jones invented the portable refrigeration unit for the Good Humor Ice Cream Company, early Divco models were not refrigerated. Perishable loads such as milk crates were loaded and then covered with ice. It wasn't until 1954 that refrigerated Divcos were offered as a regular production option. See my video on the Good Humor Ice Cream Trucks where I talk about Fred Jones and his refrigeration device for the trucks. There's a link to it down in the description below. No real changes were in store with the exception of refrigeration and insulation being installed in Divcos that were used to deliver perishable products such as milk and eggs. There were, of course, model changes, but the Model U survived with almost no change. In 1942, Divco suspended production of trucks to help with the U.S. war effort. For the next three years, factory output was comprised strictly of war materials, including airplane sub-assemblies for the Curtis Wright Corporation. Regular production resumed after the war ended. The milk trucks continued in two wheelbases. The 100 and 3 quarter inch model UM and the 127 inch model ULM. Engine selection was either a 4 or 6 cylinder Continental. 1957 saw Divco merging with the Wayne Works a bus manufacturer in Richmond, Indiana, to form Divco Wayne. Wayne Company had a bright idea to use some Divco trucks to make a small bus. So the Divco was lengthened, seats and windows were installed, and the Wayne Works produced the Divco Dividend Bus. An attempt was made to enter a new market, but very few dividend buses were ever made. Production of the dividend bus ended in 1959 with very few made and sold. Divco was spun off yet again from the Wayne Company in 1968 and production moved from Detroit, Michigan to Delaware, Ohio in 1969. The last Divco went down the production line in 1986. Divco's snub nose Model U milk truck and its variants are the most recognized of the Divco model lineup. Thousands of these trucks delivered fresh milk and fresh eggs to homes throughout America. When introduced in 1937, the Model U had a new snub hood design and had an all steel body. But best of all, it had a drop frame, making it easier for delivery men to step in and out of. The short 100 and 3 quarter inch wheelbase truck was powered by a four-cylinder Continental engine, a carryover from the Model G. The mighty engine produced a hefty 38 horsepower. The whopping big 140 cubic inch motor was governed to a top speed of 32 miles per hour. To show how durable and dependable the Model U was, the Divco Model U was second to the Volkswagen Beetle to be the longest production line vehicle ever produced. And here we go guys, this is the Divco Model U for seal test milk. This is the 103 quarter inch wheelbase. The short one, which was probably the most common of all the Divcos. It was made by American Heritage Models in 143rd scale. They made the Divco in 143rd and 187th, but they did not do a seal test in 187th, just in 143rd. I have several of the 187th still available, and the word is they're working on more 143rds, so we'll see what comes out of it. Now let's go on and pick this little guy up. 
It's a 43rd scale, so it's great for O gauge. It's a die cast metal body with a plastic chassis underneath. It has American Heritage models and made in China cast in. Uh, very minimal detail, spring suspension, muffler, tailpipe, um, rear axle, little bottom of the engine detail, and that's it. These were screwed down to a base plate, as you can see the two mounts, and they came in a display box. It has the die cast body, hard plastic windows all the way around, except for in the doors. There's no windows in the doors. However, you can see the little handle. The door does open carefully. Both doors will open. See? And then there's the doors open. Inside, you can see it has the seat, maybe. It has the seat. It has a steering wheel. Over on that far corner, way over there, is the cold box, the refrigerator box, right there, where they could keep uh, ice cream and things like that, because these really weren't refrigerated up until 1954. They put great seal test graphics and uh, dairy products there. Then you can see the seal test logo there. This little hole is for mirrors. There should be mirrors, but I just didn't bother to put them on. It has hard plastic painted wheels and soft rubber tires. And that little thing there is the fuel filler cap. The hood doesn't open on this. Kind of a bummer, but uh, it would have had a butterfly type hood, which is a pain in the butt to make. So they didn't have to put an engine. But it does have this nice little chrome piece, which was the center line. The Divco logo tampoed there. Uh, individual jewel style headlights mounted in these little pods and then this one has the bumper with the a little grill guard on it they also offered as a bumper without the grill guard and then you can see this has the uh, rectangular turn signals here they also offered it with round turn signals the windshield wipers here are hung down from the top they also did them up from the bottom in fact most of them are up from the bottom because it actually worked better there's a seal test logo there. Passenger side, very much the same details, only there's no fuel filler cap and no uh, seat on this side. These were a stand step. You just walked in and you could get all your stuff. You could even swing that seat aside and stand to drive it. Pretty cool. There's also another little hole right there and that would be for the other mirror. There's the grab bar and the door handle. And maybe you can see that cold box right there. Pretty cool. Now the doors do fold only one way because there's an overlapping lap. Now, on to the back of this truck. It has another red bumper. Two individual jewel style brake lights. The Divco logo. Seal test logo. And then a door handle. Also, this door does open as well. Both sets of doors. Then you can see in. If you can see there, now you should be able to see there's that cold box right there. Driver's steering wheel with a nice little dashboard. There's a gear shift and a seat. Then in the back, that would have just been where you put your milk crates and stuff. These were insulated. They really weren't uh, refrigerated trucks. They were just insulated trucks up until 54 and then you could really start carrying ice cream all thanks to Frederick McKinley Jones and that would make a great addition to your O gauge model railroad layout or sitting on your shelves the American Heritage Models Divco Model U for seal test milk they did approximately 20 different 43rd scales all of them long sold out but they can be found on the secondary market if you really want to look, or I can look for you and see if I can find them. Just let me know down in the comments. And there we go, 43rd scale American Heritage Models. How many of you remember getting milk delivered to your house by one of these cute little trucks? Let me know in the comments. While I don't have a Borden's Divco right now, I do have several other 187th scale Divcos by American Heritage Models over on my website, farmtoysandmore.com. Go get one now for your collection 
while supplies last. Also guys, please help me out to keep this channel going by either buying products on my website or sponsoring me over on my Patreon page. This channel takes a lot of time to make videos for you and a purchase or sponsorship will go a long way to keep it going. There is a link to my store and my Patreon page in the description below. Thanks for watching everyone. Smash that like button, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.